Chapter Twenty Seven of the Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter Twenty Seven Partakers of Christ. Hebrews Chapter Three, verses fourteen and fifteen. For we are become partakers of Christ, if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence firm unto the end, while it is said, Today, if ye shall hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. In the second chapter, the twofold oneness of our Lord Jesus and his believing people was set before us. On the divine side, they are one, for both he that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are all of one, that is, of God. Therefore he calls them brethren. On the other, the human side, they are one, because he became man, and took our nature upon him. Since the children are sharers of flesh and blood, he also himself in like manner partook of the same. There we have the same word as here. Just as truly as Christ became partaker of flesh and blood, we become partakers of Christ. In partaking with us of flesh and blood, Christ entered into perfect fellowship with us in all we were, our life and our death became his. When we become partakers of Christ, we enter into perfect fellowship with him in all he was and is. His death and his life become ours. We are become partakers of Christ. What a mystery! What a treasure! What a blessedness! The whole object of the epistle is to show what there is in the Christ of whom we are become partakers and what he can do for us. But here at the outset, amid needful words of remonstrance against giving way to sloth or unbelief, believers are reminded of what their portion and possession is. They are become partakers of Christ. There is often danger, as we listen to the teaching of Scripture about Christ as our high priest, of regarding him as an outward person, and his work as something that is done outwardly for us in heaven. This precious word reminds us that our salvation consists in the possession of himself, in the being one life with him, in having himself as our own. Christ can do nothing for us but as an inward saviour, himself being our life, personally dwelling and working in us. As truly and fully as Christ, when he became partaker of flesh and blood, was entirely and eternally identified with man and his nature, so that he and it were inseparably united in one life, so surely when we become partakers of Christ do we become indissolubly identified with him. Since Christ became partaker of flesh and blood, he is known and will be known to all eternity, even upon the throne, as the Son of Man. No less will we, when we truly become partakers of Christ, be known, even now and to all eternity, as one with Christ on the throne of glory. O oh, let us know ourselves as God knows us, partakers of Christ. It is the one thing God desires. When God set forth his only begotten Son as the only possible way of access to himself, it meant that he can delight in or have fellowship with nothing in which the likeness of his Son is not to be seen. We can have no farther entrance into God's favour or good pleasure than he can see Christ in us. If God has called us to the fellowship of his Son, and made us participators of all there is in Christ, the Sonship and the love and the Spirit of the Father, let us live worthy of our privilege. Let us live as men who are, oh, the riches of the grace, are become partakers of Christ. And how can we know in full assurance that it is so, and ever rejoice at the blessed consciousness of all it implies? Just as it was said before, where our blessed relation to Christ was set forth in another aspect, we are his house, if we hold fast our boldness and the glorying of our hope firm unto the end. So we have the answer here again, we are become partakers of Christ, if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence firm unto the end. The beginning of our confidence must be held fast. We must not, as many think, begin with faith and continue with works. No, the confidence with which we began must be held fast, firm to the end. We must see that when we are made partakers of Christ, that includes all, and that as at first, so all the way unto the end, we can receive out of Christ only by faith and according to our faith. 
apart from faith receiving Christ's strength, our works will not avail. God works nothing but through Christ, and it is as by faith we live in our riches in Christ that God can work into us all there is in him for us. It is this faith through which God can work all our works for us and in us. For we are become. Note, not we shall become, we are become partakers of Christ if we hold fast to the end. Our perseverance will be the seal of our being partaker of Christ. The faith by which at conversion we know at once that we have Christ grows clearer and brighter and more mightily effectual in opening up the treasures of Christ as we hold it fast firm unto the end. Persevering faith is the witness that we have Christ, because through it Christ exercises his keeping and perfecting power. Believer, would you enjoy the full assurance and the full experience that you are partaker of Christ? It is alone to be found each day in the living fellowship with Christ. Christ is a living person. He can be known and enjoyed only in a living personal intercourse. Christ is my leader. I must cling to him, I must follow him in his leading. Christ is my high priest, I must let him lift me into God's presence. Christ is the living Son of God, our life. I must live him, I am his house, I can only know him as son in his house as I yield myself to his indwelling. But all and only through faith we are become partakers of Christ, if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence firm unto the end. Begin each day, meet each difficulty, with the renewal of the confidence you reposed in Jesus when first you came to him. With a brightness that shines unto the perfect day, you will know what boundless blessing it is to be a partaker of Christ. When Christ became partaker of human nature, How entirely he identified himself with it, that all could see and know it. I am become partaker of Christ. Let me be so identified with him that my whole life may be marked by it. So may all see and know that I am partaker of Jesus Christ. How did Christ become partaker of our nature? He left his own state of life, forsook all, and entered into our state of life. How do I become partaker of Christ? by coming out from my state of life, forsaking all, giving myself wholly to be possessed of him and to live his life. If we hold fast the beginning, Christ maintained his surrender to be man firm to the end, even unto death. Let me maintain my surrender to Christ, live one life with Christ at any cost. Partaker of Christ, of his life, his dispositions as man, his meekness and lowliness of heart, partaker of a living Christ, who will live his life out in me. End of chapter 27